Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Zotac Mini ITX motherboard. This is the Fusion 350-A-E, that's the model number. It is, uh, as you can tell by this big Fusion lettering here, a Fusion-based motherboard, uh, which is an AMD integrated APU. So let's take a look at the box for some more details. So with this product, not only do you get the motherboard itself, but you also get the AMD E350 APU. APU is an accelerated processing unit. Now the APU includes both a CPU, and that's a 1.6 gigahertz dual core CPU, as well as an integrated GPU, an AMD Radeon HD 6310 GPU. Uh, so let's take a look in the box and see what else comes with it. And apart from the motherboard and the APU, you get some accessories. You get an input-output shield for the back of your computer case. You get a black and white Zotac uh, quick installation guide, which has pictures to aid with installation. You also get the Fusion uh, primary motherboard manual. Also included is a little sheet about your extended warranty through Zotac, as well as the driver disc. Uh, it's usually best to head over to the Zotac website to see if there are updated versions of these drivers, but the driver disc is great to have on hand for doing your build. You also get one, two, three serial ATA Revision 3 compatible cables. Uh, they are all yellow with black ends, all straight plugs. You get a DVI to analog VGA converter for those of you who are using an older monitor. And you get your Wi-Fi antenna for connecting to your Wi-Fi card. And here is a look at the motherboard itself. Again, mini ITX form factor, so it is very, very small. Uh, let's go over the details of the motherboard. Starting here in the bottom right, you have your front panel headers for your power switch, reset switch, and LEDs, that sort of thing. Right here above it, you have a four-pin PWM-controlled fan for a system fan header. Moving up to this point, we have our 24-pin primary motherboard power connector. Next to that, we have two SO DIMM slots. This is for 204-pin DDR3 notebook memory. So make sure you don't get regular system memory for this. It actually uses system memory. I'm sorry, notebook memory, but it is still DDR3 memory and supports DDR3 speeds of 1066 megatransfers per second. Also, max memory size is 8 gigs, so 4 uh, gig dims in each of those slots. Up here at the top, you have a, a four-pin CPU fan header. Uh, of this actually has a pre-mounted passive heat sink on it, so uh, not really necessary. You could connect that to a system fan if you wanted, or if you were going to perhaps swap out this heat sink, you would have that available. Uh, right up here at the top, you have a front panel 20-pin USB 3.0 header. So you can connect that to USB 3.0 ports on the front of your case. Uh, again, here is where both your APU and your chipset are. Uh, this is a Cooler Master designed passive heat sink, so no fan on it, no noise. The APU is actually right under this area right here, and it has a heat pipe, which you can see there, uh, to help with uh, cooling and heat dispersion. The M1 chipset is actually down under this area and it has a secondary heat pipe for that to provide adequate cooling for that. And again, passive means no noise at all. Let's move down to the bottom. Here you can see a mini PCI Express slot and that is currently housing your 802.11N Wi-Fi card. Uh, so, and then these little cables here go back to connect to your Wi-Fi antenna. These four red ports here are all serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. This slot down here at the bottom is a PCI Express slot. It is wired for four speed, but actually if you look at it from this end, you'll notice it's open-ended. So it does give you a little bit more expansion options. You can use, for instance, a full, six, full length 16 speed PCI Express card there. Just bear in mind it will be limited to four speed. Uh, next up we have a COM header right there. Next to that, we have a USB 2.0 header for a couple more USB 2.0 ports. And next to that, we have a uh, front panel audio connector to enable your front panel mic and headphone ports. Right above those, we have a three-pin SPDIF header for high-definition audio. And finally, let's move on to inputs and outputs on the back. Starting over here on the left, we have two USB 3.0 ports, the blue ones there. Above that is a uh, PS2 port for mic or key, or I'm sorry, for keyboard or mouse. And then you have all of your video outs uh, that are connected to your integrated 
Radeon HD 6310 video card. Uh, these are DirectX 11 compatible. Uh, you have a single link, DV, single link DVI port right there. You can use that for VGA as well with the included adapter. You also have an HDMI port and a display port out. And these support resolutions of up to 2560 by 1600. Uh, here are the two nubs for connecting your Wi-Fi wi antenna. Over here you have an additional eSATA port for a back panel that is hot swappable. Uh, and then you have four USB 2.0 ports there, the black ports, gigabit ethernet. And finally your audio port, audio plugs right here. It supports eight channel high definition audio. Uh, you also have an optical SPDIF out for a toss link cable. And uh, supports sample rates of 192K, 96K, 48K, and 44.1K. So uh, plenty of options there for high def audio, which is especially helpful since these motherboards are most frequently used for building small home theater PCs. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the Zotac Fusion 350-A-E Mini ITX Fusion-based motherboard and APU combo featuring the AMD E350 Fusion APU. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Thanks a lot for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel for more just like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.